Uh, my name is Mindy Lindgren, and I'm the Executive Director for Denali Arts Council, which um, this is the Sheldon Community Arts Hangar, the home of Denali Arts Council in Talkeetna, Alaska. We are a community arts organization, that, which means it's by and for the community. So since 1981, we've been producing art for the community. And um, it happens from the ground up, meaning if there's interest in the community, they come to Denali Arts Council um, as one venue in the community to do art, and they make it happen. Um, so since 1981, we've been doing uh, drama and circus, have been around the longest. We have a visual arts guild. Uh, there's a writer's group, film, music, photography, and dance, and you name it, if someone wants to do it, we'll make it happen. Uh, there are 800 people in Talkeetna, and in 1981 it was um, several individuals that started the nonprofit and formed an LA Arts Council and got it incorporated and got the nonprofit status, and it started with Denali Drama which is the drama program. Several years later, maybe a decade later, Greenlight Circus came along, which is a community circus program that's largely aimed at um, teaching youth circus skills and they perform. They've even gone to the state fair. And then about another 10 years later, late 90s or so, and, and the, uh, around 2000, some other programs came along like the visual arts and uh, the music and the film program and such. The whole 28 years of our history, it's, it's come from the community. So, um, you know, since then and even now, there's a great desire from the community to want to make art happen. We're a very uh, artistic community. I've heard that we have the highest per capita rate of singer-songwriters. Um, it just, it's a, a very community-minded, artistic uh, population here. I just heard someone the other day say, you know, we're really turning into a, uh, we're a focal point of the community because there's also a lot of community events in here. There's fundraisers, weddings, receptions, uh, memorials, um, scientific conferences, slideshows, speeches. So it's not just the arts run by Denali Arts Council, but the community. Uh, there was a man in Talkeetna, a, a pilot, his name was Don Sheldon, and he came here and in the 50s and 60s and 70s he operated his own business um, flying miners and trappers and, and climbers primarily is what his business turned into up to Denali since they, they were then able to land on glaciers. Um, he died in the 70s and then in 1981 Denali Arts Council was formed and uh, back then it was Denali Drama. Drama was the main art happening. And they would perform in the Roadhouse or, or in the Electric Association's hangar, wherever they could find space is where they would hold their productions, and, which was limiting for lighting and space and you know, looking around a post and things like that. And so in, um, in the 80s and early 90s, they approached Don's widow, because Don had died in the 70s. So they approached his widow and asked if they could purchase the hangar and she actually donated it to the Denali Arts Council. And so they took his uh, hangar, which was one story, and they moved it off site, built a whole other floor and balcony, and then uh, jacked it up and plopped it on top. And so now there's a two story arts facility. And it's a, like I said, it's a multi purpose facility. Um, it's been used for everything from concerts to dances to theater. There's a gallery on one wall. I love working with youth and, and I believe they are the hope of changing things um, because they're very open-minded still and they're not set in their ways so much as adults like we tend to be. And when I see them perform in circus, you know, a little um, seven-year-old on a trapeze or uh, we had a 15-year-old that had her first art show of original art and she sold almost all of it. Uh, it's just empowering to see that. Um, and it's not just about spreading the love of art, it's that it's powerful for them to have that experience of being successful and contributing and, and feeling the praise from their community. And uh, they, they learn a lot of things from it. You asked like, what do we want people to get out of it? 
and, and that is one thing is we want, um, like I said, we want it to be art by the community. So our goal is not to have a perfect production of um, My Fair Lady. Our goal is to give people the opportunity to express themselves. Our mission is creating opportunities for artistic expression. So we want to, again, we want to get people in at all levels and, and get them to express themselves. And I would say the underlying part of the mission is a healthy community. And we believe the arts are one facet of a healthy community. We try to stay in tune with the community and, and constantly improve, you know, we're not perfect at it. And, and we want to grow, grow, you know, in a sense, we have, we have a huge pool of support, but there's a lot of people that I think in this community have probably never been into this building and, you know, would never come to a drama because they grew up thinking dramas, you know, not for them. Um, but it's different when you come in here and you see your neighbors on stage. You know, I, I come to more than I probably have in other times in my life because I know everyone on stage or I'm getting to know them through that. What I think binds us together with a, a common factor is that we are very community related and tolerant and um, even if you disagree on a lot of stuff you can still live side by side and come together and um, you know I thought of one good example of the strength of our community is uh, there was a, a young man who had a stroke and he was very active he's uh, a pilot a big game hunting guide and an artist very unique individual and he had a stroke and he, um, it was at a time where he was in between health insurance. And uh, a handful of individuals, a lot of individuals, put together a fundraiser for him and raised $28,000 in one night. And tons of people turn out from the community and are generous. I mean, if you could quantify the amount of even just financial giving between all the, in, that go into all the nonprofits in our town, I, I think the per capita giving would be just outrageous for a, especially for a low income community. One of the things I've learned in my position here with the Arts Council, and, and I've only been here two and a half years, is that it's really uh, relatively easy to get grants. Um, if you, I've learned that you have to pay attention to detail, uh, really do your homework as to what the foundation or the granting organization is looking for and make sure you're a good match but if you build that relationship with them um, there's a lot of money out there to be had the other and thing i've realized is you know it, when you go into it you think of as the recipient of the grant funds you think you're you're bowing down to them and you're so grateful and i've realized in my relationships with these organizations that they're grateful for the people out there doing the work and they want to give you money they want to give money to the right organizations and they hold you know marketing receptions basically to get the word out about who they are and that they have money like they need good people to come to them um i would say dream it up and do it and um it's not as intimidating as it sounds. I think if you're, if you're doing something that you know and you feel passionate about, it will come easily. And you know what? If you don't know how to do the IRS nonprofit application, you find someone who does. And don't be afraid to ask for help. It's, it's pretty powerful when you do it, when you can start something, especially if you can make it sustainable to where you know, it could go on without you, which is the ultimate goal. You know?